Hey guys, what's up? Excoundrel here, and today we are doing a video on PUBG Mobile all weapon stats. We're going to be looking at assault rifles, submachine guns, sniper rifles, and any miscellaneous that I can fit in. Uh, I've got all of these stats from PUBG.me, as well as a couple of other resources that I'll put down in the description below, so big thank you to them. And the differences between PUBG PC and PUBG Mobile are not in the damage stats. Actually, the damage across PUBG Mobile and PUBG PC uh, appears, appears to be pretty consistent. Obviously, PUBG PC has got slightly um, more detailed hitboxes, but the main hitboxes that you need to know about, as we don't want to go into too much detail here, is the ones that you can see on your screen right now. I'm not going to run through all of the percentages individually, but all you need to know is that if you hit someone in the head, it's obviously going to deal more damage. 100% of the body means the standard weapon shot of that particular weapon. So when we come to the weapons and we compare them, you'll see that it does a, a damage on hit. So they'll be right below the weapon pictures. There'll be damage per hit. That is damage per hit to the body. You need to multiply that by the percentage to the head or multiply it by the reduced percentage to the body to find out how much it will deal to the limbs or how much it will deal to the head. I'll go through an example with the AK when we get there. Another little interesting fact is with melee and submachine guns actually deals more damage to the limbs than it does to the body. So that's an interesting one to take into account. First off, I'm just going to talk through the little right hand and left hand common columns, which is the armor. So helmets and body armor, this reduces damage to only the torso and only the head, so the limbs are not affected. Tier 1 is minus 30%, tier 2 is minus 40%, and if you manage to get your hands on the, the iconic tier 3 helmet and tier 3 armor, that is a minus 55% damage from the hit damage that you can see on your screens right now below the weapons. So when I talked about the multipliers previously, you'll see that the 48 damage from the AK is 48 damage to the body, where it deals 100% of its damage. If you were to hit someone in the head with the AK, that is 230% damage, so I times 48 by 2.3, which gets me about 110. So you'll notice that without armor on the head, it's a one-shot kill to the head with the AK. Uh, and it's obviously times by 0 0.9 if you want to get the limb damage. First thing off the bat, you'll notice that the AK and the Groza have higher hit damage than the rest of the weapons. That is because they take 7.62 ammo and not 5.56. I uh, also want to point out that the Groza and the AK have body hit impact power, which means when you are shooting someone with the AK and you hit them, it will throw their aim off because they have been hit by a bullet. The lowest comes from the M4, which is a lot lower than the M16 and the SCAR. So it means if you're firing at someone with the M4, they will be a bit more accurate if you hit them when firing back. The only other stat that I really want you to pay attention to here is the firing rate. You'll notice that the Groza has got the quickest firing rate, firing a bullet every 0.08 seconds. The AK is the slowest at 0.1 seconds. At 0.1 seconds means that the AK fires about 10 bullets a second. The rest of them scale up to about between 12 and 14 or something along those lines. Um, the M4 is the quickest 5.56. We're not looking at the, the M16 because it only has a burst mode and single shot mode. So it's very, very quick single shot fire, but obviously you can't compare it to an automatic mode. The M16 is supposed to be a long, longer range marksman rifle. So also I want to take into account the attachments that you can see on top of your screen. Every one of them can take a front end attachment, apart from the Groza, which can only take a silencer. All of them can take a magazine attachment. The M4 and the SCAR are the only ones of this lot that can take a, a grip attachment. And the M4 has got a unique item in game called the M4 stock, which helps it uh, keep a bit more accurate. My personal favorite out of these weapons is the M4 because it is the e most easily accessible on the map and when you fully stock it out, it's very, very powerful in PUBG Mobile. And I actually prefer it even over things like the AUG and the Groza. So I'm a big fan of the M4 fully stocked. I think it's one of the most consistent weapons in the game. The, one of the big differences between PUBG Mobile and PUBG PC is there is no spread on weapons. Most assault rifles in this game are hit scan. Now, there is a slight amount of uh, bullet travel speed that you do have to be aware of, but realistically, every weapon in this game does not have a spread like it would do in the PUBG PC version. So we're not going to cover spread of these weapons because we, at, at, even at range, um, you very rarely get that, and it's kind of hit scan. You kind of expect that from a mobile a platform, though, because it's a lot harder to aim. You're not going to be able to adjust your aim as quickly as you would be on a PC, so that makes a bit more sense. However, there is recoil, and we should talk about the recoil stats that you can see here. As you would expect, the AK has the highest recoil in both vertical and horizontal sections. A vertical recoil is when you fire the weapon, the weapon moves upwards with the force of the weapon shot. Horizontal recoil is where the weapon moves from left to right, um, 
usually in real life it would only move in one direction depending on which side of your body the weapon is on because that's where it moves away from the center of gravity but in mobile games and also pc games horizontal recoil is kind of from left to right and is a little bit harder to control so the ak is notoriously hard to control compared to some of the other weapons what I do want to point out is that the M16 has got very low horizontal recoil. It's a very consistent recoil weapon, but it is also single shot and burst fire. So it doesn't quite hold the same weight as when we're looking at fully automatic recoil on the other weapons. The M4 has got the lowest horizontal recoil, which makes it the easiest to control, in my opinion, when spraying. Horizontal recoil is a lot harder to control than vertical recoil, so it keeps you more accurate in that area that you're trying to aim. Which, which kind of lends itself to what I was talking about just a little bit earlier, where I think the M4 is one of the most consistent weapons in the game. It actually likely is on par in terms of recoil with the AUG, but the AUG recoil stats have not been published yet, so we only have the damage stats to work with right now. However, uh, the M4, in general, I consider to be one of the better weapons in PUBG Mobile if you can get it fully stocked out. Worth noting as well, all of these weapons can have scopes. Uh, in the PUBG PC version, the M16 is limited to a four times, but I don't believe that restriction applies in the PUBG mobile version, so feel free to attach whatever scope you like to these weapons. I'm a big fan. I've, I've always talked about being a big fan of the four times. Uh, I think the eight times, again, is maybe a little bit too much in certain scenarios. I've always been a big fan of the four times scope whenever I play a Battle Royale. Moving on very quickly to the AUG and the DP28. AUG is a... Uh, crate specific drop the dp28 is an uncommon drop but you can find it this is a slightly higher damage 556 weapon on the left the aug does take 556 ammo but deals slightly more damage than its counterparts it can have a front end a grip a scope and a magazine attachment and the recoil on this gun is good um, if not better than the m4 it's a very easily controllable gun uh, and so i recommend picking it up if you get a chance and using it the dp28 on the other hand is it's kind of like, I call this a, a tank buster weapon. I, I feel like the DP-28 is specifically designed to deal with um, vehicles or something of the like. I like to set this up on a bridge and just sit there with it. It's not really supposed to be a, a super good close range encounter weapon. It's a bit of a better longer range weapon. You can't attach anything to it other than a scope. It does 49 damage per shot, so slightly higher than the AK and the Grozer by not by much, but the recoil is pretty poor on it, so it is, it's got a fairly big kick to this gun. Uh, it has got slightly more um, bullets per magazine as well, but it's, it's very much, I feel, a tank-busting weapon in a way. It's designed to shred through vehicles if it can get the chance. I probably wouldn't recommend this if you're looking to go person-to-person -person combat unless you absolutely have to. So moving on to snipers now, and there are two classifications of snipers in PUBG and PUBG Mobile. There are the designated marksman rifles and the sniper rifles. Designated marksman rifles, or DMRs, are the Mini-14, the SKS, and the MK-14 EBR. The VSS, although it plays a little bit like a DMR, is actually classified as a sniper, as is the K98, the M24, and the AWM. You'll see that the damage scales up with all of these weapons. The only weapon that doesn't have a one-shot kill to the head with no helmet is the VSS. It does 95 damage because it only deals 38 damage per hit. But it fi its fire rate is much higher and also the, the ammo that you uh, get for it comes in higher quantities. So you'll see here that as we go up towards the AWM, this is the biggest hitting sniper rifle. This deals 132 damage and that is 132 damage without any armor. Now, what this means is that at any point in the game, if you shoot someone in the arms or legs, it is going to be a one-shot kill. And that is simply because it's 95% damage to the arms or legs with a sniper. 95% of 132 is jolly well above 100, which is going to kill them. So the AWM, it's always more sensible to try and hit someone in the arms or legs because you're just going to knock them or kill them instantly. Every other sniper has a little bit more variance when it comes to killing uh depending on what army you're facing up against. The K98 and the M24 will be a one-shot kill to the head unless they are wearing a tier 3 armor. If you want to figure out how many, sh how many shots it takes to kill someone with a certain weapon, I've linked a tool in the description down below. You can use it to figure out how many shots it would take to kill someone depending on how much armor they had and so on and so forth. It's a really useful tool. An important statistic to keep your eye on here on the snipers is the zero range. This is how effective this weapon is in aiming down the crosshair and getting a shot at a certain range. So the zero range of the VSS is 100 to 100, meaning at 100 meters, it is 100% accurate if you are fired down the crosshair. Anything further than 100 meters, you're going to experience bullet drop. So you'll see here from going up, 
You've got 600 for the car 98 and the Mini 14, so it's effective up to 600 meters before you start to see bullet drop. Then we have the SKS and the M4 K14, as well as the M24, effective all the way up to 800 meters before you start to see effective bullet drop. The AWM is effective all the way up to one kilometer, which means after one kilometer, that is when you're going to start to see effective bullet drop. The longer the zero range, the more effective it is at range. That is all you need to know. So the longer the zero range, the more effective at range. So I'm just going to quickly run over attachments for these guns. Every single sniper, apart from the Mini-14, can have a back attachment, which is a stock attachment. The Car 98 can also have bullet loops. Every single sniper, apart from the VSS, can have a front-end attachment, which is compensator, silencer, or flash hider. Every single sniper, apart from the Car 98, can have a magazine attachment, which is an extended or a quick draw. All of them can have scopes, except for the uh, VSS, which has already got a scope attached. That's an automatic four times. And the SKS can have a grip as well, because it is quite a high recoil weapon. So that is the, uh, the overall spread of attachments. If you want my advice on which uh, sniper is best, obviously the AWM. Um, then I would say the M24, but both of these are crate mk14 ebr is also pretty good but in terms of non-crate weapons i usually like to go for the car 98 for longer range engages and i think the vss is actually pretty good at short to medium range engages so that would be my thoughts on those snipers we're going to cover the smgs very quickly now we won't be covering shotguns because they work in a slightly different way um but if you want the shot stats for shotguns i will link them in the description below it is worth going and having a look at them taking a look at the smgs you'll notice that the uzi has the highest fire rate but also the lowest damage um compared to the rest of them the vector has got a low ish damage but it's 10 more than the uzi and the fire rate is quite comparable to the uzi so when you're looking at close range engages the vector is very good the ump and the tommy gun are the respective equivalents of their ammo groups and they are sort of medium to longer range weapons and they have a slow slightly slower fire rate but they also deal more damage per shot then we'll move on to the spread and the recoil of these weapons you'll notice that the recoil on the vector is much higher but that can be compensated for by having it decked out you kind of need a vertical foregrip or an angled foregrip um, to make this work and you can also now attach a stock to the vector too um, as that really reduces the sort of crazy spread that you get on the horizontal recoil the actual recoil of every other weapon is fairly similar however and these are primarily aimed at being sort of medium to short range weapons they really excel in later game circles and in early game urban engages so these are weapons that i would consider picking up in the early game especially but i would maybe look to replace them with a rifle as i get towards the mid game depending on the setup that i'm going for i like to have maybe a shotgun and a rifle or i like to maybe run with an smg and a rifle but i'll always swap out the smg for a sniper if i find one on my travels through PUBG. So hopefully that was a good broad insight over the majority of the weapon groups in PUBG. There's also the M249, which you can see here. This is a machine gun. Its damage is 44 per hit. It also has a pretty decent fire rate as well. It has a lot of... Of ammo per mag though so you get a lot of time without having to reload which is obviously very important it's very much a spray weapon it's got very high vertical recoil it's got pretty decent horizontal recoil though better than a lot of other guns um, but you do have to look to control this it's a very much like the dp28 where you can shred through uh, vehicles for instance but i also quite like this in short to medium range engages um, so don't overlook this weapon i think it's pretty solid it also comes from those crates so here is a quick overview, and I'll link this Excel document in the um, description below. It's made by a very, very talented uh, Reddit user, which you can see his uh, link in the description below as well. And you'll notice that overall, and this has got a, a, a spread of how many shots it takes to kill, depending on on which helmet and which armor they have so i'm not going to go through all of this myself but this will give you an overview of how many shots it takes to kill for each of the weapons that we cover today depending on their armor group so it'll be very important uh for those of you that just want to study that a little bit further but i'm not going to go over it in great detail because it's there the information is there and it's also available in the excel uh, or the google document that i linked in the description below so hopefully that was enjoyable hopefully you guys got a lot of information from that and you can guy get onto the uh pubg map and start to slay some enemies that was cringy. See you soon.